Hi there YouTube and makers and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you here and to have you joining me today as I cover part two of the tender wheels on the Kozo Hiroka 040 layout Pennsylvania E3 switcher steam locomotive engine in three quarter inch scale. In previous installments I covered thinning out the blank to the proper thickness as, as called out for in the book, as well as doing some layout work and roughing out the wheel wells on the tender wheels. So that you never miss an installment of my make, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon so that you're alerted of whenever new videos are posted. And please feel free to, feel free to share my videos with anyone you think might be interested and comment below. I'd really enjoy the opportunity to interact with some of you and to be able to get your feedback. In part two of this installment, I'm going to be finished machining the wheel wells as well as putting in the axle holes on the tender wheels. Initially off camera, I used my depth micrometer to check the depth of the wheel wells and it came out to 0.116. Now my finished depth is going to be 0.125 or for those of you who think in fractions that's 1 eighth. So I have approximately about another nine thousandths of depths, depth to remove in the wheel well. Though in the steps that you're going to see me take I'm probably honestly only going to take seven or eight thousandths off in order to to accommodate expansion of the material. Currently, we are now on page eight of Kozo Hiroka's book. And if you're interested in getting your own copy of the book, be sure to check out my links below. Be sure as well to stay to the end, where I cover a journeyman trick that is super practical and I found to be very useful on not only this part of the make, but I think also an additional makes that we'll be covering down the road. Off camera, I already set up my round nose cutter in order to machine the exterior portion of the wheel well. And so what that kind of looks like on my super complicated and expensive model here is I brought my cutter to the highest point I possibly could get it. And the reason that for that being is that as my piece rotates against the cutter, the cutter deflects downwards. So I wanna make sure that my cutter has as much clearance as possible to avoid this portion of the radius that I'm cutting. But also with the deflection, the cutter, if it were here, would be pushed down into the piece that I'm cutting. So by bringing it up here, I'm achieving a little bit finer finish, but also providing clearance. Now, that could be alleviated if I had done some custom grinding on my cutter. So that may be something that I should consider doing here in the future. With all of that out of the way, come on over here and join me at the bench and let's make some chips. I'm going to take my shop towel and do a quick little wipe. I want to make sure I don't have any air chips or anything else that's going to kick out my tender wheel and cause her a wonky cut. I'm use my Tommy bars to apply clean, solid, even pressure, and then they're nice and square against the chuck jaws. Now, next thing I'm going to do is bring it in, and I'm going to just barely touch off on the roughed out wheel well. I remember I got to go another nine thou. So I'm going to barely touch it off. And really, the only material that's going to be removed is the material left over from the prior machining operation that I left behind the rough surface finish and ridges. And I'm going to go 8,000 in, but I'm going to just probably split it. So go in there and start machining the exterior of the wheel well. I bring it into to match my layout line. Okay. Now 
half of the scary part. I'll start plunging in about four though. First four thou, keep it nice and well lubricated with that cutting fluid. I'm plunging in my last four thou. Right, be careful not hit that inner wheel well. Oh, you see a change color? I did. Hit it at bottom out on the bottom of the uh, cutting tool. So hopefully I didn't work hard in it too much and create too many problems for myself. All right, that's it. That is the exterior portion of the wheel well. What you're gonna see in this next portion is I'm gonna set up initially my cutter for the inner part of the wheel well. If you'll remember, I demonstrated how I set up my cutter above the center line as much as I could get it in order to machine the exterior portion of the wheel well. Here, I'm going to be setting it up to machine the interior portion. Now, if the color was set up high as it was for the exterior portion, it would, the bottom portion of the cutter would not have necessarily have space to clear the interior portion of the wheel well as it rotates this way, right? Again, that could be alleviated if I did some custom grinding and ensured that there was clearance for the cutter. But, I'm going to be bringing mine down to center line or just below center line so that as the workpiece rotates and the cutter is deflected downwards, the cutter clears the workpiece. And I get a little, and I've been finding that with the, the cutter dimensions on my round nose cutter, the material I'm using, I'm getting a little bit better finish at center line. All right, let's do this. Let's finish machining the interior part of this wheel well. Almost there. Now hopefully in the prior step when the bottom of the cutter bottomed out, I didn't overly work on this interior portion. But we're about to find out here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my cutting tool to below well, not below. I'm actually going to bring it down to the center line. Now, one thing I do have to say here is that I did make a mistake. And the uh, journeyman machinist who advised me brought it up in that my cutter was sticking too far out of the tool holder. And as a result, for Warren, you're about to hear it, a just wailing, screaming banshee of chatter. And that's because my cutter was sticking out too far. And I was advised that in the future, I need to make sure I bring my cutter in as tight and as close to the tool holder as possible. And indeed, that's absolutely true. I found that once I started doing that, I got much better finishes and much reduced chatter. So, lesson learned. Here it comes, work your ears. Look away. You're so easily traumatized. I'm sorry, but that is bad chatter. And that is improper tool holding on my part. So Again, I'm only really touching off on the on here. Um, since last time I went 8,000, 8,000s, I really just touching off. I didn't really go any deeper. But we'll see if I took off too much. Now comes a big test. Fingers crossed, I got it right. Because this is a uh, subtractive activity. There's nothing additive about it take too much off and it's not like I can glue the chips back on there so here I'm using some 600 grit wet dry sandpaper is a very tiny burr for this final machining operation and I found that that was just sufficient to knock the little burr off so wipe this guy down so I can get a 
good accurate measurement. And let's see how I did. Oh, that is nice. 0.125 on the dot. Beautiful. This brings us to our journeyman trick of the day. It seems super simple what I'm going to cover, but it makes a huge amount of sense and a big difference. What I'm going to do for my center drill, reamers, as well as the drill bits, is that I'm going to basically orientate them so that the cutting channel is up. And that provides a nice little reservoir that will hold on to my cutting fluid. Seems really simple, but it makes a huge difference. Because if that reservoir wasn't up and it was tilted sideways, all that cutting fluid would just keep running down and running off the cutting tool and on my lathe ways. So be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so that you never miss a journeyman tip or trick. So this is our journeyman trick of the day. Again, it seems super simple, but with the uh, flute not orientated correctly, all my cutting fluid just runs off. And just simply turning it so that I have a good cutting fluid up and locking that guy down. Now all of a sudden, I've created a great little met reservoir to hold on to that cutting fluid. And it's perfect for making that cut. Amazing, just mind blown. So I'm just going to speed it up through here to give myself a little center drill to prepare for drilling out my axle hole before I ream it out. Now, what you're going to see is I'm going to continue using the journeyman trick of the day and orientate it so I've got a nice fluid or channel upward that's going to hold on a nice reservoir of cutting fluid for me. The drill bit I'm using is a American-made high-speed steel that I found locally at a tool house. It is a 7.8 millimeter. Now, I went with a 7.8 millimeter because the manufacturer, my reamer, recommended using a drill bit that was 97 to 98% undersized of the final reamer or reamed hole diameter. Here, I do have to say that uh, I am kind of avoiding doing the incremental drilling. When I kind of pose the situation to the journeyman, the journeyman recommended to me that unless I was drilling a one inch wide hole and using a woefully underpowered machine, I really didn't need to do incremental drilling. And even then, I'd only use like a half inch inc incremental drill bit. So I'm doing the 7.8 .8 millimeter and then I'm going to ream it out. I do have to say though, this is deviating from Kozuhiro Oka's book on page eight, where Kozuhiro Oka did use incremental drill bits as well as re bored out the hole. So I kind of hemmed and hawed about it a little bit, kind of figured out whether or not to do it. Um, I don't know exactly why he did that. I think it might have had to do with the fact that you're making eight tender wheels, or rather I'm making eight tender wheels. And that's eight opportunities to practice boring operations. And on tender wheels, you're using a smaller and perhaps cheaper piece of metal than you would be using doing boring operations on a piece of bearing bronze or a, an expensive casting or an expensive pre piece of brass used to make something a more complicated part like the steam chest and it's better I, I think that in his book which is designed to build you up and build me up step by step to make these mistakes and to do these boring operations on a simpler part like this rather than a more complicated part and a more expensive piece of metal later on down the road and to build up your confidence with because after all it's eight opportunities to learn this, eight opportunities to repeat this, 
eight opportunities to refine the techniques. So really happy with the way this turned out. It's an absolutely mirror glaze finish in there. Perfect hole. That is a finished machine tender wheel well. And thank you so much for joining me today. As we covered how I finished machining the tender wheel well with a round nose cutter and set up my cutter to cut the exterior portion, the interior portion, and then used a center drill or spot drilled for my drill bit to that was undersized and then reamed out the, the axle wheel hole to the proper dimensions. Next time, I'm going to be machining a Yarber to hold the tender wheel out of this guy here, a piece of hot rolled steel that I believe is half an inch thick. And with that arbor, I'll be able to finish my tender wheels and put the contour in the flange as well as round off the flange and finish it to the exterior dimensions. So be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so that you're aware of when that video posts so that you don't miss a thing. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that like button and give me a big old thumbs up. And please share the video with anyone you think might be interested in following along with my make as well as comment below. I would really enjoy the opportunity to interact with y'all and to hear back some of your feedback and to see where you guys are on your makes. If you would like your own copy of Kozo Hiroka's book on building or making the, as you see here, the Pennsylvania A3 Switcher 040 layout steam locomotive engine in three quarter inch scale, be sure to check out the link below. Thank you so much for watching. It's really great having you join me. Have fun out there and keep making chips.